If your vehicle has a P0171 trouble code, I'm going to show you how to diagnose this, that problem and finally, hopefully, fix your vehicle. Okay, yesterday my vehicle was starting to run rough. Finally, a check engine light came on. I noticed whenever I try to start it up, it doesn't, it just spins, 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 finally cranks up. But once the check engine light came on, it kept going just fine. Now, it, it came out as diagnostic trouble code P0171. Now, on a, on a Toyota, that means it's a system too lean on bank one. Well, bank one on this four cylinder is the engine. It's just, there's only one bank to it. If you had a V6, there'd be two banks. So bank one. So what that is saying is, is adding too much fuel. The system thinks there's too much air, is not giving enough fuel. So it's pouring fuel in there, trying to make up the difference. And there's a few ways to figure that. Now on a P0171, it's either gonna be a vacuum leak, maybe your mass airflow sensor is, is dirty or gone bad. Um, I, I'm pretty sure my catalytic converter has died. Um, I'm not getting that trouble cold, but I can hear it rattling. And that's never, that's normally a telltale sign that the elements on the inside have broken up, likely due to a lot of fuel being put into the vehicle more than it needs to, and it burns up the catalytic converter and it starts breaking apart. Now you all seem to really like these diagnosis videos, so I'm gonna show you a way to kind of break this down. Here's the check engine light, okay? And we're gonna already see that there's a diagnostic trouble code in ECU-1. We've already figured that out. Now let's see what the freeze, uh, the, the freeze data, what am I talking about? The freeze frame shows when that, what caused it to, to go off. And on this little scanner that I got here, well, eventually, okay, there's the code. The system was closed, so the engine was warmed up. The load was 24%, so I guess I was giving it a little bit of throttle. Engine coolant temperature, ECT was 89 degrees Celsius, which is what, a um, hundred, no? I, I don't know, we'll figure that out. It's between 90 and 100 degrees. Okay, short shift, and then, I mean, short fuel trim, that's what that FT stands for and long field trim. Now, this is where the problem is. A good short field trim should be as close to zero as possible. Long field trim should be, the difference between the two when you add them up together should be no more than 10 to, um, 10%. Look at that long field trim, 32%. So that means it is adding fuel to try to figure it out. So there's either a, a big air leak or um, my mass airflow sensor. I'm leaning the mass airflow sensor at first. So let me back this out. Let's look at the live data stream. Now this, a lot of these scanners will have this option. This one's a, a cheapo one that I got online. All right, here it is. So load is at 19. So really I'm at, I'm at, I'm at auto right now. Okay, engine's still warming up. Still pretty good though. Okay, short term fuel trim, negative three, negative four, that short one, it's always going to do some adjustment. That's what's going on right now. And that's actually good. But look at the long fuel trim. 34, 34%. That should be no more than 10 on the bottom. Now that bottom one is doing quite a bit of work too. So um, I'm leaning toward the mass airflow sensor. We're going to clean that right now. Okay. On this engine, on the Scion XB04, it's going to sit right here. Now, Scion is the same as the Toyota. They just did a weird thing where they gave it a different name. Mass airflow sensor has two screws on the top. And i got to push down to try to get it going. It's, I don't think it's ever come off, so I'm sure it's dirty. I run this on a mail route, so mud and everything is all up in here. That's why the engine looks so dirty. Okay. All right, let's pull this out. And I mean, by looking at it, you really can't tell. There's a resistor. Let's go ahead and clean, put some mass airflow cleaner in this thing. This thing at the auto parts is well over a hundred bucks. I really want to clean this up and see if it works. Okay, I'm going to spray this mass airflow cleaner. Okay, don't use anything else other than that. Here we go.
to spray it all really well. And then let it dry. I mean, there could have just been a little bit of dirt on there over time. Okay. All right, let it dry. Then we'll put it back in there and see if, see if it makes a difference. Okay, after cleaning the mass airflow sensor, really nothing has changed. It's still adjusting quite a bit from negative 3 to negative 10. Um, it's kind of within range, but really doesn't need to be that much. It really needs to be really no more than 3, um, minus 3 or above 3. So we still got, it's not the mass airflow sensor, I don't believe. We must have an air leak, so a vacuum leak. So that's the next thing we're going to do. I'm voicing this part over because for some reason my microphone uh, messed up. So what I'm doing here, and I have a video about this already, I'm going to spray some brake cleaner once I get this engine running. Now please grab a fire signature or a water hose. Uh, I know many people have said you can use a smoke machine to do this. I don't have one. And, and so this is what I have right now on hand. So what I'm doing, the engine's running and I'm spraying little little sprays right around the intake, anywhere that can possibly suck air. So on the intake, uh, around the valve cover gasket, anywhere, like I said, that can pull a vacuum. And what I'm listening for is for it for the engine to suddenly increase because it's sucking in fuel from that car um, that brake cleaner, or maybe it's gonna just completely just shut down because it's just too much. But as I'm spraying this, I'm not finding any of that. In fact, this engine sealed really well, which I'm really surprised. So, um, yeah, so this is going to lead me to my next thing. Next part of diagnosis is I'm not finding any issue here. So I obviously do not have a vacuum leak. Now, I'm spraying even more because I'm really trying to find a vacuum leak. But no, so this leads me to my next part where I'm going to try to figure out what else could it be. It's not a vacuum leak, so it's something else. I went ahead and replaced the, the mass airflow sensor with one that I knew was good. And there's not much a difference. I mean, it is it's still adjusting, but the long, for, long fuel trim is a little bit better, but still way, way too high. That's insane. So another possible, since I don't have a vacuum leak, since the maps, mass airflow sensor is obviously working, it could be the fuel pump. The fuel pump may be going out. It may not be, do, be producing enough pressure. Now, look at here. Notice that says my fuel is empty. No, it is not. That had a, over half a tank when I got here earlier. So something's going on with the fuel pump. And what really led me to believe it was when I went to crank this up a little while ago, the fuel pump was really loud. So what may be going is even though it's cranking up, the fuel pump may be failing and it's not putting enough pressure and thus everything's acting crazy. So I'm gonna turn it off. We're gonna go ne near the fuel pump and you're gonna listen, see how loud this thing really is. It's not even making noise now. I'm pretty sure we figured out the problem. It's the fuel pump. Now I did replace this, oh, about four months ago, but I bought a cheapo Amazon one. So you get what you pay for. So. Looks like I'm going to have to go ahead and, and pay the big bucks for a good one. Okay, figured it had to be the fuel pump, so I went ahead and replaced the fuel pump and with a much better fuel pump. I wanted to show you this real quick. This is after replacing the fuel pump. And short-term short -term fuel trim, it's about around zero. Long-term fuel trim, about negative 13. In other words, this thing is running pretty right on perfect and I mean it's you can see it fluctuating between 2 and 10 um, so long as within about 10 degrees give or take it's going to be perfectly fine and it's running great looks like it's finally fixed so so the running lean could have lots of different reasons why it's running lean code um, we went through the basic stuff we checked the mass airflow sensor went ahead and replaced it with one that I know is good not a brand new one those are expensive so I went and put that in, didn't make any difference at all. Checked for vacuum leaks, didn't find anything wrong there. So the next thing was, um, might be the fuel pump. And so I heard it, 
you got to use your eyes and ears to fix some of this stuff. So I heard it, I pulled it out, and most likely I may have this issue again because the fuel tank gets a little rusty and rusty and fuel pumps don't work that well. So if it happens again, I'm just gonna have to bite the bullet and um, buy a brand new fuel tank for it with a new pump. Those pumps are not cheap. So I had one, uh, I'm, I have another Scion that I'm working on to put on the route and um, well, I'll just have to replace that pump when that time comes. So um, anyway, Mailman Mechanic, see you at the mailbox.